Hello, my name is David Carr and today I'll be showing you how to make these scrap wood balls using a stacked ring technique. To make these balls I'm using some leftover wood from a different project, in this case it's teak boards. The first stage on producing the balls is now to use a table saw to rip the planks down into square section lengths. Whilst doing this, be careful to keep the hands well away from the blade and use a push stick where appropriate. Once these lengths have been cut, you'll then need to cut them down into shorter spans, but it's best to match these up with a template first. You can do this by simply drawing out the maximum circle of what you wish your ball to end up. All of the lengths can now be placed together into the profile of the two templates and then separated at the centre gap to create two blanks to be bonded together. When it came to gluing up, with teak being a particularly difficult wood to glue, I opted for an expanding glue that should ensure a good bond. When gluing up the parts, ensure that all of the glued surfaces have a good application, being careful not to apply glue to the centre of the two blanks which will need to remain separate. Once the glue has been applied, the lengths can then be rotated to bond to each other and then clamp together tightly while the glue cures. As this particular type of glue cures, it will expand and then overflow from the gaps. This is particularly useful with a wood like teak because it will then permeate into all of the pores of the wood ensuring a good strong bond. Once cured, all of the excess can be manually removed quite easily with a chisel. The two half ball blanks will then need the surfaces prepared. This can either be done by sanding, or should you have access to one, a thicknesser can be used to plane back both surfaces evenly to a uniform thickness. Once this has been done, match the two blanks back up and scribe around the largest diameter of the ball. After this you can work back over using a 45 degree stock to then work out your cutting lines and drawing back up at 90 degrees to work out where the next cut line will be and progressing on until you reach the bottom of the ball. All of these marks will then need to be scribed around again onto both of the two blanks which will then give you the lines that you need to cut around on the bandsaw. Over at the bandsaw I've tilted the table up to the 45 degrees that I've drawn the marks to and it's now a matter of very carefully working the way around the lines. Be mindful of the amount of exposed blade at the table and always keep your hands away from it. At this stage it's always best to take your time and be as accurate as you possibly can. Once all the parts have been cut, the magic of the stacked ring technique comes into play, whereby each of the blanks can then be pulled apart and stacked up on each other to rapidly create something resembling a finished item. All of the resulting layers now need to be bonded to one another. The best way I found to do this was to book match them on the back with masking tape first which then allows them to be prized apart and glued. The tape will then allow the parts to come back together and match perfectly without too much time being spent over them. Be sure to apply a good amount of glue to these joints making sure that it's spread evenly. Once this is done, apply an even pressure to the parts, being sure not to over clamp the parts because this could incur breakages.
Once the glue is set, the top and bottom of the layers can be sanded back to remove any imperfections and true the surface to flat, ready for gluing. Take particular care whilst doing this, as too much sanded could result in offset layers. Try to remove as little material as possible on the sander, and keep on checking the individual layers against a true flat surface. Once all of the gluing surfaces on the individual layers have been prepared, apply a good amount of glue which can then be spread over them. Be sure to equally coat the layers all the way around and then proceed to stack them up. As you compress the layers together, the glue will naturally splurge out and may cause the layers to misalign. This will need to be corrected before applying clamps to ensure a good bond. Once the glue is cured off, remove any large amounts of excess glue before proceeding to mount the ball onto a face plate for the lathe. As with all wood turning, before starting you should re-sharpen your tools to make sure they've got the best cutting edge possible. At this point I'd also recommend wearing a good amount of personal protective equipment because this particular type of wood turning can produce a lot of turning spraying off. When turning on the lathe, proceed as normal using a variety of scrapers and gouges as you prefer. However, bear in mind at these initial stages not to put too much pressure onto the ball because you don't want to stress the glue joints. A variety of other wood layers tools can now be used to true back the surface and achieve a better surface finish. The outside of the ball can also be sanded at this point However, I'd recommend not taking the surface finish too far until the inside has been finished to a similar extent. Should one be available, a ball turning rest is ideal at this stage, as it will allow you to keep an even sweep over the internal radii of the ball. After the main ball shape has been roughed out, remember to keep on checking the thickness in the particular areas of the ball before turning down the wall thickness. Whilst being mindful of the wall thickness, continue turning the ball until you achieve the desired internal profile. Once this has been achieved you can then carry on with a range of different tools as you feel comfortable to improve the surface finish. Once all of the main cutting work has been completed on the lathe, completely remove the tool post and then continue on with various different grades of sandpapers. Removing the tool post eliminates any chance of catches while sanding and allows you free access to both the internal and external of the ball to create a seamless finish. Continue on with progressively finer grades of sandpaper and even wet and dry to create a nice even glossy finish around the ball. There may be some particular areas where the grain is rougher and stands out which may need to be manually sanded when it's done. Before applying a finish to the ball, 
give it a light rub over with some clean dry cloth which will then remove any excess dust from within the pores of the wood. There are a number of different finishes that you could apply to the bowl, but in this case I'm going with a very hard wearing yacht varnish. To apply the varnish to the bowl I'm using a rag of cotton cloth and applying a liberal amount at a time to particular areas of the bowl. Once the varnish has been allowed to soak in for a few seconds, remove the excess by simply wiping it away from the surface. This should leave quite an even shiny finish around the bowl. Continue in this way until the entire surface of the bowl has been treated in this way. As the varnish starts to dry, the bowl may require a second rubbing over to apply another coat to the bowl. Once the varnish is set solid, the bowl can be removed from the first plate on the lathe. The bottom of the base will now need to be finished off, which could either be done by sanding back into the bowl to remove any blemishes and refinishing the surface, applying a base material, or in this case applying a cork backing. To do this I've cut a disc just slightly larger than the first plate was and I'm cutting around it to create a perfect disc cork which can then be glued onto the bottom of the bowl. The scrap wood bowl is now fully completed and can be put into its intended setting for use. These are a particularly good way to use up all of the odds and ends of wood that are left over after your projects and can create quite a stunning looking piece at the end of it with minimal waste.